Coach. Hey guys, how we doing? Appreciate everybody coming out to cover Penn State football. I want to obviously start by thanking the crowd. Um, I thought we had a great crowd for an, for an opening game. I'm really, really appreciative. I think we had 104,000, which, which is special. We don't take that for granted. There's not too many places in the country um, that can do that. Um, overall, obviously, I think we did some, some good things. There's obviously going to be a bunch of stuff on this tape that we need to get cleaned up. But a couple things, uh, we won the field position battle, which was great, 42 yards compared to the 30. Uh, probably would have been even better without the special teams turnover. Um, turnover battle was a push. Um, penalty battle, we won that. We were three for 30 in an opening, in an opening game. I think that's really good. They had 10. Um, and then explosive play battle, both our offense and defense met their goal. Uh, I think we were 18% on offense and 7% on defense, so that's really good. Some specific points, you know, I thought obviously Jordan Stout's 53-yard field goal tied for the sixth longest in Penn State history, uh, which is fantastic, but he also had 13 touchbacks. I remember on the headset, the coaches were talking about, worried about Chasina being tired because he was on four special teams units. I said, well, what about Stout's leg? Um, he, he had a really good game for us. Devin's Ford's 81-yard um, uh, run was, I think, the longest since Saquon's 92-yard run in the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, Itor Gross Matos played really well, 49, 49 points in the first half, obviously. Um, I think it was obviously a real positive for us. I think we haven't done that since Illinois, 56 points. Uh, 406 yards of total offense, just, just a lot of good things. John Reed with an interception. There was other things that kind of jumped out to me. Um, you know, having five running backs all score a touchdown, it was, it was fantastic to see Nick Yuri score a touchdown and how our sideline reacted. Um, I was a little worried we were going to get penalties because guys were running on the field without, without helmets. Um, 35 first downs. You know, and then little things, you know, shorter running down the field, um, shielded, um, you know, shielded guys off, didn't clip, shielded guys off on the long touchdown run. I thought the defense really kept them on their heels all night. Their offense played within our system. Yeah, obviously, Castro Fields, we talk about championship habits. There's a ball that's on the ground. He scoops and scores. Just little things that I notice that I'm very, very pleased with. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of guys got a lot of really good experience. So uh, overall, really good, really good game for us. Really good opening game. Uh, obviously, we're going to have a bunch of stuff that we need to look at on film and get better. But it's a good start. Open up the questions. Raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. James, you touched on it, but could you address further the ability to get so many young guys uh, a lot of quality reps in a game like this in front of this sort of crowd? Yeah, it was, it was really valuable. And there's always the discussion on the headset of when do you get guys out? You know, when do you get guys out? Um, I think we played shutout football and defense, although the scoreboard doesn't necessarily show that. Um, but... But I thought, you know, we were able to get, you know, like Lance Dixon and, 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 and Brandon Smith, we were able to get them a bunch of reps, which was great. Adisa Isaac, a bunch of reps. Um, you know, a lot of guys, those young backs, I can go on and on. Uh, Salim Warmly, I mean, some guys even that we weren't planning on getting in there. So, um, you know, that's going to pay dividends not only this year, but over, over, over the next couple of years. Um, so, I, yeah, I think, I think there's tremendous, that's a tremendous positive. I don't know how many guys actually played in the game, but, but it was a bunch. James, you, you mentioned the other day all the running backs would play. A lot of them got in, a bunch of them scored touchdowns. When you can evaluate them in a game setting like this as well, how valuable is that as opposed to just practice? Well, it seemed like they, they played really well, obviously, based on the statistics and just the flow, on the get, flow of the game. The other thing I would say is, you know, I, I thought – you know, Sean was pretty comfortable in the pocket most of the night, and that was our O-line playing well, but that's also young backs. That usually is an area where young backs, you know, can, can miss a, a, a blitz pickup or whatever it may be. I thought they played well from that perspective. So um, had a few new wrinkles to get the running backs involved in the passing game. They did a good job with that, too. So, um, you know, overall, again, I, thought, I think really good. James, can you give us a quick evaluation of how Sean did in his first start? It looks like he was a little excited in the beginning. Yeah, I thought the first two drives, um, you know, he missed some throws, you know, not, not because of a lack of arm strength, um, missed some throws, just, you know, was inaccurate. You know, his, foot, his feet were probably a little antsy. Um, but I thought, I thought after those first two drives, and he even admitted that to me, that he really settled down and got comfortable. So, um, you know, I thought he managed the game really well. 
you know, his, his stats, I wouldn't say are overly gaudy, but, but played well, you know, played really well, protected the football, was really good from a decision-making process, was able to run the ball a little bit, and I think as the game went on was accurate. I think, you know, one of the things that I think stood out to me, I, again, I haven't studied all the stats or the film yet, but we got to get better on third down. We weren't as good on third down as we need to be, and, um, you know, we'll, obviously that will be an emphasis, um, you know, to continue moving forward. Coach, how are you? Good, John. Good. Hey, how pleased are you with the overall performance of the wideouts today? Yeah, you know, again, you know, those guys, you know, you got you know, two true redshirt freshmen that haven't played a whole lot of football and Shorter and George, and I thought they did some really good things. And we were able to get a bunch of guys involved with Carr and obviously um, – KJ did some great things like everybody expects. You know, I thought early on with some of the punt returns, they obviously had a plan that they weren't going to let, you know, KJ win the game. Um, but I thought early on KJ was pressing a little bit, was getting frustrated, you know, wanted, wanted to get some of those punt returns and some of those other things. But, but uh, you know, we all know he's a weapon. I think he's one of the more, if not the most explosive player in the country. And we want to make sure that he's involved as a kick return, as a punt return. We kind of had a discussion that kick return to start the second half. You know, um, we wanted to get at least one rep with him as the kick return to get it on tape so we could, we could work on it and clean some things up uh, for moving forward in the season. Um, but we had decided by that point to, you know, get him out of the game. So, um, but I thought, again, you know, I think overall, I thought the wideouts did, did some really good things, and we got a lot of guys' touches, and we got a lot of guys involved. Coach, uh, Pat Firemuth took a big hit towards the end of the first half and was a bit slow to get up, and then obviously in the second half, you guys played Bowers a lot. Was that a situation where you felt he could have come back into the game if you guys had needed him? Yeah, I appreciate the question, but I, I don't get into uh, specifics when it comes to injuries, but I understand you got to ask. Coach, you mentioned uh, the reaction when Yuri scored the touchdown. Can you talk about the quarterback that engineered the final drive and being able to put Michael into the game? Yeah. And what did you say to him, and yeah. were you happy yeah. to get him in He's the game? another guy. I mean, Schuster's been phenomenal. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I'm not sure if, if this is the right decision or not, but I think he's starting to kind of lean into maybe coaching. Um, he's, got, he's already got a job offer, um, you know, in the real world. Um, but... He just does a great job for us. He's like having another coach. Uh, takes a lot of pride in it. Uh, he's been a fantastic student. Has been a fantastic teammate. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge Schuster fan. You know, he, he brings a lot of value to our organization. He really does. Uh, where a lot of people probably wouldn't notice. It seems like we got a Schuster fan up there who's clapping. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Uh, James, you mentioned that you wanted to get a lot of tackles involved, and you guys did. But later on, you were able to move Des, keep him at left, and put Rashid over on the on the right side. What's the benefit of that as you guys work to try and get him more comfortable? Well, because you know, right now we we got three tackles. We got to continue to get Caden some experience, but we think we're going to play three tackles throughout the year. You know, we feel like Will can do both, but we think he's he's really a well, one of the better right tackles in the country. And then with with um, Rashid, we think that's our answer at this point is he's the backup at right tackle, um, and Dez is the backup at left tackle. Dez is just much more comfortable at left tackle. Uh, we feel like Rashid can do both, so that's why. And then as Caden continues to gain experience, you know, hopefully we get in a situation where he. You know, ends up being the backup, a true backup, not just in depth chart, you know, by, by maybe the third, fourth game of the season. Hey, James. Um, Yitor coming back off that suspension this summer. Seems like he picked up right where he left off, a couple sacks, two and a half, I think. Um, what, have you seen him attack these last five weeks or so since he rejoined the team? Yeah, he, he's been he's been really good. You know, he's been really good. Um, you know, I think you guys know what his motor is like. It jumps out to you on, on tape. Um, you know, he's really a guy that's a, a yes sir, no sir, hardworking. Um, he's been that way since the day he's really stepped on campus. Uh, and I think we all realize he's got tremendous potential, you know, and he's not a one dimensional guy. You know, some of these guys that put up gaudy stats with sacks and things like that, that's that's what they are. Etor is 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 physical and, and as good against the run as he is in the passing game. Uh, James, we all lost count in the press box how many defensive linemen you play today. But uh, when when the opposition gets tougher, how many guys do you think you could get in on the defensive line and not lose uh, quality? 
at tackle, or are you talking to end? And the defensive line as a whole. Yeah, I think at DN, we're truly, you know, three deep on each side. You know, so six guys that we feel like we can play. And then I think at defensive tackle, we're in that argument between five and six guys. And, and the other thing is, you know, uh, you know, the reality is, you know, we got to we got to keep playing those guys to gain you know experience and to gain our trust. Um, this game, this game will give us a better determination when we watch the film in detail and and who really played up to the level that we need them to play. Um, but we think we're in a conversation of five or six guys at D tackle. We think we're in a conversation of five or six guys at defensive end uh, probably got less questions at DN than we do at D tackles, but we're still talking five or six. James, uh, this kind of margin, it's hard to point to one play, but um, the fourth and one real early that you guys stopped, uh, were you anticipating that they were going to go for that and just what kind of momentum that that helped set a tone for you? Yeah, I don't know if I would necessarily say we're anticipating, but we're always kind of ready. We're locked on their sidelines, seeing if they're going to bring the punt team on um, or not, uh, and how we're going to have to call it. But again, I think that goes back to the point that was just made: is is up front our defensive line. You know, I think we're disruptive on the defensive line, but I also think. You know, a few years ago, a guy, you know, Mike Stoll, probably doesn't get enough credit around here. He's one of the better college linebackers I've ever been around. I mean, phenomenal. And I think we're at a point right now where we got some linebackers that are erasers for us that can make some plays and do some things. Um, so I think the combination of our defensive line play and some of the athleticism and, and experience and feel and the instincts that we have at the linebacker position, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a really good combination that hopefully will continue to help us in in short yardage and challenging situations like that. Thank you, coach. Awesome. Thanks guys. Appreciate you.